Okay, now let's look at an example for the Hardy-Wamberg equation that we might use. So I, as you see here, I have um, an image that has some normal healthy red blood cells, and then we also see some misshapen ones that are sometimes referred to as sickle cell shape. So in certain parts of Africa, there are up to 2% of the babies born that are born with this disorder called sickle cell anemia. It has to do with these misshapen um, red blood cells that don't carry the oxygen throughout the body like they should. So assuming Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium is true in the population, how many babies are born as a carrier of the trait? So in this problem, we're assuming that this population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, meaning we're assuming that that equation is going to hold true for this population. Now, there's a, a couple things that we just need to review, and first of all, um, we're going to use the letter H um, to represent the alleles for this particular um, disorder. And so we're going to say the dominant form, which is capital H, would be the normal hemoglobin, the normal red blood cell. So someone whose genotype is H, big H, big H, this is a healthy individual with normal red blood cells, normal hemoglobin. And then if someone has the genotype big H, little h, one dominant, one recessive, they're still healthy because this is a recessive disorder. They're a carrier of this affected allele. So this allele is the affected one, but since the dominant form is the healthy one, these individuals are still healthy. They do not have uh, sickle cell anemia. Now an individual with the genotype little h, little h, or inheriting both recessive copies of the allele would, would have the disorder, sickle cell anemia. So in our anemia, there we go. In our question, we are looking at the parts of Africa in which this is a very high percentage. So compared to the United States, 2% would be extremely high. So we say we have two babies out of every 100 babies born that have sickle cell anemia. So if we get that and we say, okay, then that would mean 0.02 of the population it are the individuals born with sickle cell anemia. So what we need to do then, I'm going to take us to the next slide, we, we need to understand what does this equal to in our Hardy-Wamberg equation so that we can figure out the answer to our question which is how many babies are born as a carrier which would be how many babies have this particular genotype. So let's just go back and review a little bit of this, this equation up here, which is what we're focused on. And remember that this variable here, this unknown p squared, this represents the individuals who are homozygous dominant. So in our sickle cell anemia example, we're talking about individuals who have this genotype. We look at Q squared, and we recall that these are individuals who are homozygous recessive. So in our example, we're talking about individuals who have the genotype little h, little h. And finally, we have this um, representation here, which are the heterozygous individuals. And this is what the question is asking us. Okay, these are the individuals who are big H, little h. And notice that it said assuming Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium because many times if we know um, a certain gene or allele frequency in the population, then we can estimate or determine the others. So assuming that this is true in the population, we're gonna try to determine what this portion of the population is. So let me just now um, clear the slide here, if I can, with the eraser, um, so that we have clean area to work with to do our mathematics with. Okay, so we know this portion is 0.02. That was given to us in the problem. So Q squared is equal to 0.02. Now at this point, we can figure out what Q 
is so that then we can further figure out P based on this equation below. So Q squared is simply the square root of, oh, excuse me, Q, let me erase that. Let's start this part over. Q squared is equal to 0.02. Q is simply the square root of Q squared, which is the same as the square root of 0.02. So if we pull out our calculator, then we can work that out really quickly. 0 0.02, take the square root of that. And we'll round, so let's say 0.1414 is what we get for Q. Okay, if we use this equation here, then if we know either P or Q, we can easily find the other one because we can see if we rearrange that equation, P is equal to one minus Q, and in this case, one minus 0.1414 which if you work that out on the calculator, you should get 0.8586. So now we know both the values of Q and P, and therefore we can solve anything we want in this equation with that information. So the question asked us how many individuals are carriers. Okay, that would be asking for this part. How many heterozygote individuals are there? So. 2 times P times Q is just 2 times the value of P that we just calculated, 0.8586, times the value of Q, which we calculated also, 0.1414. And when you work that out on the calculator, you should come up with a value of 0.2428 when you round. So that would be the proportion of the population that are carriers of the sickle cell trait, or that allele. Now if we wanted to, we could also determine how many individuals are healthy or homozygous dominant. And that's easy for us to do now because we know the value of P. So we say 0.8586 squared, or 0.8586 times 0.8586, we can do that and come up with, on the calculator, if you do that, you come up with 0.7372. And so another important thing to remember when you're working these types of problems is that this should always be equal to one or the, the people who are homozygous dominant plus the people who are homozygous recessive plus the individuals who are heterozygous, when you add all of those proportions of the population up, it should equal one or 100% or you've done something wrong in your problem. So let's bring the calculator back up, make sure that we have not um, made an error, and we'll add up our population proportions. So let's um, start with the P squared value, which we know is 0.7. 372 and we'll add to that the heterozygote um, part of the population which we calculated as 0.2428 and then we will add to that what was given to us in the problem which is Q squared or the homozygous recessive 0 0.02 and sure enough we ended up with everything equal to one so we that's confirmation that we haven't made a mistake on our calculations. Thanks so much for joining in.